Okay, great. Okay, um, so now what we're going to do is to um, is to put the people within a network. So to do that, um, double click on person, and um, we're now going to have a line to connect people. Okay, so um, if you double click there. Uh, we're going to add a line from the presentation area by dragging it over, okay? Um, uh, and uh, specifically, uh, we're going to go down to presentation. We're going to take this line and drag it over. And what I'd like you to do is to drag it in a way that um, that the, the plus side, that's the side that... Uh, that is, so there's two kind of sides to it, and it's the side that you actually drag from. So if you drag this line, it's the side that sort of nearest your cursor. That side should be in the center of the, of the um, circle, okay? That's sort of where, the, uh, where this uh, line is coming from, okay? Um, Okay, the lines are directional, so you've got to be aware of, of which line. So it should look something like that. There's a dot on one side and a, and a plus on the other side. Okay. Um, uh, so, right. Um, uh, if you're initially unsuccessful, uh, place the line on the canvas, um, and, and then you could drag the, the plus side there. So let's run the model now. Run the model, and... Here we go. And we got something like that. These agents have an appearance, but it's a singularly un un uninspiring appearance. It looks like a field of lollipops um, or a field of, I don't, I don't know what else, um, arrows and targets or something. Um, but it turns out that we're on our first um, first step towards uh, getting agents connected within a network, okay, um, visually. So um, right now there's only one line per agent. If we want agents to be connected, they may need more than one line because they have to be connected to each person to whom they're connected. So each of these lines, ladies and gentlemen, needs to go to a neighbor. And if a person has three neighbors, they need three lines. Okay, um, so we're gonna we're going to um, go through this. So uh, we need one line per connection, and uh, those lines will connect uh, connect the people. So what I'd like you to do is um, uh, go select the line. Okay, um, select that line so it's selected here, and so it's shown in the properties window. Yeah. Um, and then I'd like you to go to the dynamic properties of that window, okay? Um, and you'll see there's a field. Now this dynamic properties um, uh, tab may look kind of odd um, or may look uninspiring, but this is one of the most powerful features of any one. So under the replication area, um, we're going to, we're gonna tell it how many lines, this one line, needs to turn into when a person is running. And turns out that's the number of connections they have, okay? So we're gonna need to enter a tiny bit of Java code to do this. This dot get connections number is the name of it. So what am I doing here? I've just entered, I've just told that this line should be replicated a certain number of times, but I don't know ahead of time how many times. I could put 10, and I'll create 10 copies of that line for each person, but I don't want that. I want the number of copies of that line to depend on the number of people to whom they're connected. So for the replication under dynamic properties, the replication is actually given by the number of persons in this agent is connected. And this, within the context of a person, this refers to the current agent. It's a reference to that agent. And so if you say this dot connection number is saying, hey, ask myself how many connections do I have? Where did this get connections number come from? Well, we we actually can see it in a couple of ways. At the most uh, mechanical level, if we do this dot get C and we do control space, we can see there's a get connections number. And actually, if we look over, it says returns the number of agents connected to this agent. Hmm? Is that, that get connections 
Yes, yes. Another place we could find it, and that's just what I was getting to, is if we were to go up to any logic help and um, to go look at the reference, and we were to look under um, under uh, topics within any logic help, we would find um, a, a set of information on uh, how to build up these models. And one of the things is this any logic uh, classes and functions. And we could look there, but you know, if we would uh, count connected agents, something like that, and we were to search in here, um, we, could, um, we could find descriptions, um, uh, descriptions uh, accordingly. Uh, so here's, here's information, get agent collect and deliver to random. Um, Okay, agent at cell, agent connections and networks, and uh, here we are, get connections number, returns the number of connected agents. Finally, for those of you who are interested in the technical underpinnings, if we went to this any logic help, if we went to any logic classes and API reference, what we could find is um, uh, quite, some, quite some detailed understanding of the properties of an agent. Um, so here's an agent class, and within an agent class, there's all these different methods described that support, um, discor re report different properties. So here's a bunch of methods, they it turns out they inherit, for those who know what that means, and there's other information to find, uh, other methods to find specifically for the agent. Can you write your own methods? Yes, absolutely, and we'll be doing that, we'll be doing that. Um, so, so this is get connections number. So that's the first uh, component um, that that we want. Okay. Um, so um, the second thing. So this is all in the dynamic property associated with this um, with this line here. Um, okay. So we're writing some code here, um, some Java code, and um, and it's worth uh, bearing in mind that sometimes there are tips provided by any logic within this context. Um, so uh, we're going to be filling in some details down here and you'll notice there's a little um, there's a little um, uh, light bulb that, that will suggest things to us. Okay, so, so we'll be making use of that and uh, we could do control space for it to have it fill things in. Okay, um, so um, so there's one line, so there's uh, multiple lines now per agent. The other thing we have to fill in is where those lines go to, okay? And this is where it gets a little bit tricky, but uh, bear with me for this. So we're gonna have to set the distance over a line goes. So if we have an agent, we have one agent here, agent, let's call it X, or well, let's call it for reasons of, of uh, didactic, so let's call it A. And there's another agent B. If there's a line between them, I'm going to locate them like this. If there's a line between them. If they're connect, this agent is connected with that one. We're going to need this line to go down to B, okay? Um, uh, to go uh, to go over to B. And in order to do that, that line has to go over a certain amount dx associated with the line. And it has to go down an amount dy associated with the, with the line. How far does it have to go down and how far does it have to go over? It depends on the difference in position. It has to go over by the difference in x position and down by the difference in y position. Mm -hmm. um, so we have to put in a bit of code for that. That's one of the more complicated little bits of code we put in uh, within this boot camp, but let's, let's get it done. Um, Okay, so this is the, the geometric reflection we just had. If this guy's at position X, A, Y, A, and this one is position X, B, Y, B, it has to go down by Y, B minus, that should be Y, A, and over by X, B minus X, A. Let me correct this here. Um, okay, so, um, okay, um, a few useful points. We, we saw this reference to this. The reference to the current agent. You're associated with a person. This refers to the current person. And agents are objects. You can ask them questions. You can call methods in them, ask them about their properties. Um, so they have 
They can answer questions in the form of asking methods to do something or to return a value. And um, we can we could get information from them. So if we have reference, we can request information by calling a method on it or by requesting information from it. So if we're a given agent, we can get the agents we're connected with by calling a method called get connected agent. Okay? So to get the first agent we're connected with, we can call this dot get connected agent zero. Get the second this dot get connected agent one. And that will return us a reference to the agent to whom we're connected. Okay? To get the x or y position of a given agent, the x and y locations, if we have a reference to that agent, say a reference to this agent, we can call its dot get x method. And um, it will return to us its x position. So this is called a method call. It's calling a function. It's kind of like um, way back in high school, um, you called the sine function. Um, and you wrote, you know, sine of, of 2 pi or whatever. Um, here, this is a method, or call it. In this case, it's a method on, with respect to a particular agent. Okay? So this dot x, get x is saying, hey, whoever this refers to, give me your x value. Um, so it's kind of like saying, this is got get x, you know, like an apostrophe there. It's, it's their, their get x. Get x for that, um, for that particular object. So if we have a reference to an agent, we, we know which agent we're talking about, we can ask, hey, what's your x property? And it will say, my x value is 100. We can ask y, what's your x value? And we say, my x value is 200. Then we know the line has to go over by 200 minus 100, or by 100 units, OK? Um, so that's the idea. So. This is the complicated code that we're going to have to, um, that this is uh, building up to it. So, so the position of this one, this agent, if I'm the current agent, this, I'm agent A, my position is this dot x, excuse me, this dot get x, it should be, um, and this dot get y. And the position of the other agent is, well, it's the agent I'm connected with. If it's the zero, if it's my first agent I'm connected with, it's this dot get agent, connected agent zero. That will return a reference to the agent that I'm the first agent to which I'm connected. And I can ask for its x value. And similarly, I can ask for its y value. If I'm dealing with my third connected agent, it's zero, one, two. So I can ask for, get me the third connected agent, this dot get connected agent of two. That will return a reference to the third agent, and I can ask for its x value. And similarly here, I can ask for its y value. How? Yeah. Should it should be get x and get y. I, uh, I should have uh, been more careful in, in putting this together. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Get x and get y. Yeah. Um, OK. Yeah. Okay, the, the way in which it's decided this is that we told it in the environment up here, we told it to apply a distance space network. And that imposes a network. As long as two networks are within a connection range of 50, they're considered connected. If we had changed this to 100, it would have been if two were within a distance of 100 from each other. So logically, they're connected right now. We just don't see it. And I'm defining the way in which the presentation will allow us to see that. And this is just for presentation. This is purely for presentation. Connect, they're, they're logically connected right now. We just aren't, aren't um, visually seeing it. Once we do this, we're going to be able to reuse this to the rest of the boot, boot camp. And it, right, they don't have like a method for it. Either. Yeah, I know. For, for doing this automatically, yeah. it's, it's too bad. Yeah, <laughs> it is too bad. I, I agree completely. So where were we? Well, we were over in this um, in this um, uh, connection um, in this uh, properties associated with this line associated with person. So we're within person properties associated with line. You recall that we had told that this line has to be replicated this many times, and and now we're going to enter the code for dx and dy. So this is the code for dx, okay? This dot, so that's me, 
I'm saying, hey, I'm agent A. What, who is the agent to whom I'm connected? Now, what is this index thing? Well, you'll notice when you click on this, if you go hover over this thing here, it says, and I'm going to try to get it to do it here, it says use index, index of replicated line. So basically it's saying, okay, this line may be replicated several times. And when, when it's, this is determining the dx value for the line, um, this will be the dx value for this copy of the line. Because each line may go in different directions. Okay? Um, so, so in short, I'm going to enter this code here. It's going to provide what index is for this particular line. I'm going to get the agent that's connected to, to me for that particular line. I'm going to get its x value, and I'm going to subtract off my x value, and that will be how far the line should go over. And similarly, how far the line should go down and y, this dot, dot get y and get y. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is probably the most complex code you'll be entering, you'll have to enter in this boot camp. As, as part of the, the instructions. I personally strongly dislike this, but once we build this model, this is boilerplate, we'll be able to use this, this from now on. Okay? So um, let, me, let me put that up again, just so people can see that. Um, and I'll, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, so TA help. Anyone need TA help? You may want to do this dot get C control space or command shift space to, to fill out this thing and you know and fill an index. So again, this index, each line, we, we told it to replicate the line. For some agents, it'll have zero command shifts. Some agents will have 10. For an agent with n connection, say 10, there'll be 10 lines associated with it. And it will apply this dx and dy separately, ladies and gentlemen, for each of those lines. Each of those lines it will apply this for. And because it applies it separately for each of those lines, the index, this thing called index, will be set differently, provided by context for the zeroth line, the line to the zeroth connection, in other words, the first and the tenth, it will provide index of zero. And so that line will go go however far over it needs to get to the number zero associated with it and, and far, far down to get to number zero's y position. For, for connection number one, second one, zero, one, um, it will go over however far needed to get to the, to the position x for, for that second one and similarly for y, etc. All the way up to the zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Does that make sense? Um, then the replicated lines will be zero, and this won't be executed at all for that for that particular agent. Yeah. Correct. Correct. And. Um, connections per agent, uh, no, it, it is. So this replication, if, if you're talking about the replication things. Uh, uh, no, oh, in the environment, sorry, sorry. Um, in the environment, uh, oh yeah, sorry. These guys are grayed out. So if you, if you pick different networks, some of the different ones are, are enabled. So like for ring lattice network connections per agent is set for a small world. These two are set. For a uh, scale-free, this last one is set, and for a distance-based one. So again, I'm looking at environment under main, looking at advanced properties, the connection, uh, sorry, the, the advanced properties for the environment. Because this is a distance-based, only this one applies, if that answers your question. So the, the question was, why is this blank and, and enabled? Or not, it, and this thing doesn't apply, it doesn't apply, right? Yep. You you choose uh, random, and then and then it would say how many connections per agent on average, and and you could say, you know five. This is a plus on random network, um, yeah. So you could say two or you could. 
it's a Poisson random network. So it's, in other words, each, a so any two agents have an equal likelihood of being connected by a given line, and it adds as many lines as required to have this average number of connections per agent. Does that make sense? Yeah. But, but I want this to be a distance-based network now with a connection range of 50. So folks, just to rehearse this again, in main, in environment, we have environment setting, a distance-based network. The persons here, for a person, we have this, this line. And this line is going to represent several lines in the network, connections to each of the neighbors. How many lines? Well, it's going to depend on how many neighbors that individual logically has. And for each of those lines, it's going to use this logic to figure out how far to go over. Does that make sense? OK, so I'm going to run this thing now. And we are still seeing something um, quite, quite atrocious. So uh, let, me, let me go figure out what's going on here. That was uh, uh, not entirely expected, uh, to be sure. OK, so um, let's, let's go OK. OK, so oh, <laughs> thank you, Cheryl. Um, you would have seen a bit of debugging process there, but um, it's nice to have a friend. Um, OK, uh, that's one of the best debugging processes. This is called not pair programming. This is called like uh, classroom programming. Um, there we go. Okay. People get this? Who needs help? TA? Yeah, TA? Um, you in? Could you deploy? Um, so uh, other, other people need help? TA? Anyone else need help? You should see this. This is important because we're going to build the top of this. Okay. Okay. Uh, another another help here. Turn my trunk. Oh, okay. Um, she's getting. Uh, okay. Great. Um, maybe the left side is just more willing to speak up. Um, who else needs help? Okay. Um, okay. So do, do people see this? Something like this? Okay. So you just passed the, the Java programming test. Um, you won't get Java certification yet, but, uh, but that's pretty good. So it turns out that um, those dynamic properties are, are really, really uh, handy. So what we've done here, just to sort of uh, give you a sense, we've just sort of told it, okay, for these lines, how many to have and and sort of how to define how far they go over. And it takes care of figuring out sort of how to make that, uh, how to make that happen. And it turns out there's lots of things in any logic where you fill in kind of something conceptually equivalent to that in the sense that it's a, um, it's kind of like a spreadsheet formula. Um, and it takes care of just making sure they all get calculated in the right order, the right, the right time, in the right way. And this is kind of an example of that. Um, but we have written Java. We've had to deal with some concepts from Java, this notion of this. It's kind of me. And by calling a method on myself, I can get a reference to another agent that I can then ask a question of. I can then ask, for example, its x value or y value. And that's a, um, a very common thing to do within, within the Java context. And any logic offers lots of ways to insert snippets or, or hooks of Java code. Okay, um, and you'll want to take advantage of these sometimes. So what's going on is that this model is being turned into Java code, and that's being turned into Java byte code. Now it turns out you can actually inspect the Java code if you want to. So you could right-click. For those of you who are technically inclined on the computer, if you right-click on person and you do open with editor, you can see all the code for person uh, arrayed before it, and whether it's in glory or in um, and hideous uh, progression is, is up to you. Um, but uh, that's Java code. You can't modify that. It's generated automatically, but you can look at it. Um, so uh, you can modify up here, it goes to Java code, then it turns into what's called byte code, which can get, um, can get run, okay? There's some buttons up here. Uh, you see build model, and that will, um, 
that will turn the model into a form that's actually um, rec sort of runnable. Okay. Um, okay. So um, we're, we're we're in good good shape here. Um, right. Um, so uh, simulations model. Okay. So I'd like you to save this model away. Okay. Um, uh, save this model and. Um, so we can we can come back to it later. Okay. Um, uh, in the interest of time, I'm going to skip over those things, and we are going to um, we are going to go to the next lecture, which is um, uh, specifying agent properties. Keep that keep that model uh, up. Uh, just make sure it's saved away. And I'd like to go to. Uh, okay. So stop. Um, stop and.